Hi everyone, uh, Luke here, uh, aka Stone Mosaic. I'm here with a, um, another comic review. This one of Desolation Jones, written by Warren Ellis and um, drawn by uh, J. H. Williams III. Um, this was originally a. Um, this was the first six issues of the series, but apparently the, the, uh, the series sort of ended abruptly after the eighth issue. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be. Um, reading those uh, issues that, that were um, uncollected. Because I found this story can't really be all that great. It's about um, a former MI6 agent um, who was sort of um, part of this um, experimental um, project put on by the uh, British government where he's sort of in like, a, in like a weird kind of like state where he's he never sleeps for a year and is um, subject to a bunch of different um, Images and data, and sort of, sort of like overloaded, and kind of goes, goes a bit um, off his rocker, I guess. And then, but then you know, he, he eventually retires, moves to uh, Los Angeles, where he sort of hangs out in the dark because he can't really go out in the sun. That part is, is kind of sort of explained, but not, not too much. There's there's some parts that I kind of skimmed over just because it was very long and expository and kind of, kind of. I don't know, kind of tedious to read, unfortunately. And I've heard great things about Warren Ellis' writing. I haven't really read very much of his stuff, so I don't know if this was a minor work by him or how this is sort of sort of fits into his greater body of work. But um, I'm looking to um, give uh, some of the other stuff a shot just to see if this was um, some sort of anomaly. But uh, it's rare that I, I, I sort of stop reading a comic or a trade sort of halfway through and didn't, then just don't pick it up just because I just wasn't really wasn't really getting anything out of it. I mean, the whole plot line, which I won't talk about too much, it's, it's not really for um, all ages and I'd rather not get, in, get into that on this in case, you know, younger, younger people are watching. I don't know if they, they are, but, you know, it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's a CD book and there's some weird stuff going on and, um, I don't know, having characters sort of go on these profane tirades and then sort of go back and forth with all these creative insults, it just, it just didn't really appeal to me all that much and, um, you know, he probably could use those things to, to a better, to a better, um, to a, a better use, you know, using it all more sparingly so that those so the sort of themes and the language that he uses has, has more of an effect, but just kind of glossed over it just because it, it got kind of a tedious and repetitive and um, I got the same sort of feeling about Tumor by uh, Joshua Hale Fialkov. Just, I don't know, it, it, it's, just, it's just very, not like overwritten, but it just, it just doesn't make, make any sense and it's kind of a, a chore to get there, unfortunately. Um, I'm talking about the art because I was trying to give both the writing and the art they do and try to talk about both and see what sort of rating I would give if I combine them all. And uh, this gives you a decent idea of J.H. Williams the third, his art, which I felt a little disappointed by just because there's some stuff here and there that where he draws char a lot of characters. Um, let me get to the page here. He just really likes drawing characters very ugly way. I don't really know um, why. It's just kind of kind of strange. Um, and I and I heard I really think about his art from uh, Batwoman and other stuff he's worked on. Um, and like with Warren, also I'll definitely give his stuff more a shot. But it just seemed kind of strange how you know. You, you get some some decent stuff here, and then you get sort of like a flashback sequence, and then you sort of get some very um, uneven art, unfortunately. And you know, he sort of is someone who everyone always talks about as being a great artist, and unfortunately, this book doesn't really didn't really didn't really prove it to me, unfortunately. Um, so, unfortunately, if I, um, since I'm giving it a giving these books ratings, and I'm doing it out of ten, unfortunately, I only give it out of four. That's about two out of five, which means it's not average, but it's also not terrible. If I was terrible, I would give it one star. You know, I I can tell that Warren Ellis was trying, and was trying to get 
some interesting stories going, but just didn't really appeal to me that much, and I didn't feel like it was very effective at pulling my attention and moving the story along at a, at a decent rate, just because I felt like it got kind of bogged down in the dialogue, which was repetitive and kind of, I don't know, uh, profane for no good reason, and, you know, um, like I said before, the, you know, doesn't mean the story has to be squeaky clean and for all ages, but it just, I don't know, it just didn't make a lot of sense. Having to trudge through the book didn't really appeal to me all that much. But anyway, um, let me give you a little um, preview of what I'm going to be talking about uh, next time. Aztec, the Ultimate Man. Um, apparently, this is a spinning out of the Justice League of America. Um, and um, this book, along with a few others, were, were some that I, that I had sort of discovered just by looking on my library's website and seeing which books, um, or, uh, which uh, trades they have um, at my local branch. And um, this was one of them I thought, you know, give it a shot. It's, it's like a 10 issue trade, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, not hold my breath, but you know, it could be an interesting story. It's written by uh, Grant Morrison and Mark Millar. Creator is who I hear a lot about, but again, being a sort of comic book uh, newbie, still um, not really sure if, if uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like the writing or if I don't like the art, but that will be for next time. So, in the meantime, uh, happy reading.